first big set piece press conference here in Manchester in what, uh, well I remember it as the Free Trade Hall. I remember seeing Pat fight here a few years ago, Pat Barrett, Free Trade Hall. He was uh, on here, I was, uh, I was watching I think back in 1993 was it? But here we are, 2017 and a big show this one. It's going to be live on BT Sports, live on Box Nation and uh, in every sense I think it's uh, the start of a new era and uh, I think it's probably appropriate first of all that we have a few words about that from Francis. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, thank you John and uh, thank you to everyone for being here today, um, boxers and, and the press and uh, those of you from members of the public, thanks for being here. Um, as John rightly just said this is quite rightly billed as, as a new era, um, this is a fantastic time for British boxing um, and with my father Frank Warren and the deal that he struck you know, with Box Nation and BT Sport, it's, uh, it's, it's a time to be thrilled to be involved in boxing, not just as a business but as an individual and also for these guys uh, here and also the other guys part of our stable, um, it's very very exciting time. Um, Saturday's show is a great way to kick it off, obviously at the top of the bill we've got Terry Flanagan defending his world title in his hometown um, and Nicola Adams also making a pro debut alongside Daniel Dubois um, and also the rest of the guys here today which John will go into a bit more detail about. BT Sport are going to be heavily, heavily back in boxing obviously um, you know, from the deal that has been struck and, and, uh, you know, and the involvement they're going to have over the next, over the coming years. Um, but you know, obviously the, the clear off, there's some uh, tickets still uh, available as well on Saturday um, and they can be purchased from Eventim, Manchester Arena and from frankwarren.com. Good time as well, I think, as well to thank our new major sponsors, uh, Foot Asylum, 12 month official brand sponsor, one of the UK's leading sports fashion retailers. <coughs> uh, thanks to them, they're Heartland very much here in Manchester, so I think probably appropriate that it's a Manchester show that they're first associated with. And as well, our official betting partner, 32 Red, who I think I'm right in saying are going to be sponsoring this and the next four events. Right. So thank you to them as well for coming on board. Right, well, the fighters here today and trainers as well will come on to the WBO interim super welterweight world title fight between the two Liams in uh, a few minutes. But first of all, let's uh, look at some of the, the other guys who are on the bill. And from the left, you've got Martin Gethin, and then Zelfa Barrett, local lad, Paul Butler, who's going to be hoping for his own world title fight before too long, Jordan Thompson, very promising young cruiserweight, and Jack Catterall, undefe undefeated fighter from Bolton, defending his WBO Intercontinental Super Lightweight title against Martin Gethin, and as well as that, there's a Jordan Thompson as well, who's here very promising young fighter. Well, let's start with uh, Jordan. Five fights undefeated, and uh, special, isn't it, to be on this bill, mate? Um, yeah, yeah, very special. Big, big opportunity. Um, let's say a massive thank you to, obviously, Frank Warren for giving me this chance, and obviously working in both foot with foot asylum as well. We were obviously sponsoring the show, so that works hand in hand. And just like to thank everyone for giving me this opportunity and I'm looking forward to putting on a show come Saturday. Your gym mate of uh, Jack's as well, haven't you? So you've seen him working together. Some good training in the build up to this? Yeah, yeah, it's been a very, very good camp. I mean, um, having Jack alongside me, obviously, a lot further on in his career, um, obviously, he's a continental champion. But having him alongside me, I mean, it's a, it's a motivation in itself and an inspiration at the same time. Um, gives me that extra push, obviously wanting to be on the same level as him, fighting for big titles, defending titles in, in my home city, so it's very good having them guys around with the team. What's the time schedule, Jordan? How, how long do you think it's going to take you to get up to, well, the sort of level, first of all, that Jack's at? Um, only time will tell with that. Um, I'm obviously ready and willing to go whenever, but as I keep saying, I've got a lot to learn in the game. Um, obviously not having as much experience as a lot of other fighters out there, but I'm up for it and I'm ready, so just got to put my trust in my team, put my trust in my promotion team, and I'm sure it'll come. 
Now, you people might not know, he's a, he's a real all-round sportsman, but you're a very good, uh, very good tennis player, and his brother as well, a, a top tennis player, and his dad was uh, uh, a leading karate fighter in this country. So it's very much in the blood, isn't it, John? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, my mother and father were world champions in their respective sport, uh, karate. So I um, always coming from a combative uh, background. I think it was always in the gene I was going to end up somewhere along the combat scene. But now I'm looking forward to doing them proud and following them closely in their footsteps. Well, we're certainly very much looking forward to seeing you in action. Now, the uh, next man to speak to, Zelfa Barrett, who's uh, never, never short of a few words. Nice to see you here again, Zelfa. Yeah, man, thank you for having me. And uh, your uncle, Pat, back there at the, uh, at the back of the auditorium. I said he fought, actually, in this building, in the Free Trade Hall, back in 1993. But it's all about you now, undefeated in 15 fights and looking to make a bit of a statement this weekend, yeah? Yeah, um, hope. I've been meant to do it eight round, but it got um, put down to six, so I'm looking just to put on the show, show my skills and get a good win. It's all going very much according to plan so far, isn't it? Yeah, um, we're trying, we're just relying on hard work and, and we're gifted from God, so that's all I can really say. How long do you think it's going to be before you get up into the title contention which everybody associated with the Frank Warren organisation think you're capable of producing? How long before you get to that sort of level? Well, I believe I'm ready now. It's the man over there, he's the man behind the badness, my uncle Pat. Anything he tells me to do, I'm going to do. I'm just, I'm just a fighter, I'm not a promoter. I'm, I'm just a fighter, so when he says I'm ready, which I know, I feel like I'm ready now, and I think, I think we all know we're, I'm ready now, but whenever he says go, then I'm going to go. If he, if he tells me to jump, I'll just say how high, I'm just a fighter, as I say, so whenever he tells me to, I, I'm ready to fight for a title, then I'm ready. What's it like having him guiding you? Um, it's great, he's been there, he knows the game in and out, and he just wants, he wants the best of me, he doesn't, you know what I mean, he's, he's my family, he's my blood. He's, he's, my dad is not my uncle, you know what I mean, and my uncle Mike as well, they're both being father figures in my life, so he wants the best of me and I couldn't ask for any, anything else. Well, we're certainly looking forward to seeing you in action again, so do well this weekend. Oh, thank you very much. Really good fight as well on the uh, undercard, this fight between Jack Catterall, down here to my right, and at the far left here, Martin Gethin, Walsall lad who's come into the back of this, challenging for Jack's WBO Intercontinental Super Lightweight title, on the back of a really good win against John Wayne Hibbert. Now, if you've not seen Martin fight, he always brings 100%. He is a very, very brave fighter, committed fighter, and that victory against Hibbert, Martin, I mean, that's shown, I think, that you've very much got things left in the tank and things to prove. That's it, yeah. I'm like a boomerang, I keep coming back, you know. Um, I've, I've had a few ups and downs, but you know, I've, I've, I've stuck in there, kept training, uh, you know, because I went through a few um, injuries, and you know, he's, he's coming back from him, off them injuries, and what it is, I stuck down, so he kept training, kept on turning my trainer on, keep getting me forwards just to get me you know, out there, regular, you know, and, in, and that's what happened in the last four How comfortable are you at uh, the heavier weight? You know, you're a former British lightweight champion. What sort of a difference going up? I feel a lot, I feel a lot better. I've been out to eat a lot better, drink. Um, going down to the old place, at least I had to dry myself. And I, it was, you know, I had nothing when I went in there. Even though I don't know where I won some of the fights, so I've done. But I just literally, it was just up there, I was mentally strong. And, and I just battled through the fights with no energy, um, and you know, the winner. That's, that's what I'm in, I'm in there for. Uh, Tell us your thoughts on Jack as a fighter. You're obviously going into this thinking you're going to win it. Yeah, yeah, def definitely. I'm going in there to, to win it. He turned his effort in easy fights. You know, he's, he's a good lad. He's a good boxer. You know, he's to at the top in the England in the England camp dog. So I'm going to go in there and he's going to do some easy fight. You know. He, so it's, I'm, I'm trying hard, I'm trying hard for him. Weaknesses? Are you going to tell us what you think they might be? Um, no, I'll find them out in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, undefeated, 
And you, you know, you, you must have studied Martin, you know what he's going to bring. He's, as I said, he's always a very brave, committed fighter, isn't he? Yeah, <clears throat> watched uh, quite a lot of the videos for Rune, done a lot of the, the homework as well. But I'm expecting a tough fight, and now we've both had plenty notice for the fight, so uh, we've had plenty of time to prepare well. How has your preparations gone? You certainly look well. Yeah, really good. I've uh, been in the gym since the new year, just working on different things. So I've had a good long camp, so I've had plenty of time to study and uh, knuckle down. What do you want to add to your performances that we've not seen before? What do you want to get up there on Saturday and really show? Uh, for me, it's just about getting the win. I can go out there uh, <coughs> just about boxing to the best of my ability. It's just the win. You're not looking to respond to those people who say, you know, you need to go through the gears and be a bit more spectacular? Uh, of course it's good to look good in a fight, but uh, as long as I go out there and do what I do, I feel that that would be enough. So what do, you, what do you think then, last question on, on this fight, what do you think for the actual outcome, how it's going to go? Is it going to go long? Uh, I know Mike will train well, he's coming off a good win, so I expect a tough fight, whether the stoppage comes, we'll see on Saturday. Okay, well, thank you very much for that one. Now, completing the uh, lineup of the people in front of me is uh, Paul Butler. And uh, well, for Francis, maybe. Paul, not too far away from another world title shot. How, how's all that panning out? What's the likelihood in the months ahead? Well, I've always said that um, Paul is one of the most naturally talented fighters we've got in the UK um, and beyond. Um, you know, love watching Paul's career develop from, from start to you know winning the world champ, winning, winning the world title, and, and then challenging obviously against Teddy when it didn't quite go his way. But he's come on really strong since then, and he had to be pretty patient. Um, but we are there or thereabouts with a couple of people uh, that we've been talking to. Um, and so this is a fight to just keep Paul sort of, sort of ticking over. But we'd expect all Paul to be fighting for a world title certainly by the end of the summer, if not early in the new season. Um, and I think. Uh, I think Paul obviously knows a couple of names that we're, uh, we're chasing down and I think he'd take either of them or, or one of the three of them we are um, chasing down at the moment. I'm well, sure. we've seen, we've seen sure you've got a few, few words to say about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll bring Paul in on that. I mean, Paul, nice to see you here and uh, preparing for this with uh, Joe Gallagher, ready for another, another outing and inching closer maybe to a world title shot. Francis being a bit coy about it, but I can say it. They're talking about Jamie McDonnell maybe the WBA champion, or possibly uh, Lee Haskins. I mean, these are obvious names out there for you. They're potentially really exciting times. It could be a big year, couldn't it? Yeah, it could be a big year. Um, we're working hard. Obviously, we've got this fight first on Saturday night. Um, we get through this. And then, obviously, we are looking at Jamie McDonnell or Lee Haskins. Um, I'd prefer Jamie McDonnell out of the two. He's got the names on his record. He's, he's potentially the better fight, the bigger fight out there for me, so I'd like to, I'd like to push on towards, towards Jamie McDonnell. Yeah. Why do you want, why, why are you talking about Jamie? Do you think he's the style which is suited to you? No, I just think he's the bigger name of the two, and that's the one I'd rather go with. I, um, if I was to beat Jamie McDonnell, then this is Anik for the super fight as well, um, which is a big fight as well. Certainly be a, a big domestic showdown. I mean, that, that, that either, either McDonnell or Haskins, that would be a, a one which should enthuse the fight public, wouldn't it? Which is what you want. Most definitely. Um, Lee Haskins is a, another good fighter. Um, British world champion, he holds me the title that I held when I beat Stewie O, which is the IBF title, which I'd, I'd like to get my hands back on that, which I never lost in the ring. How have you enjoyed being part of Joe's gym? Uh, Joe Gallagher. It's been brilliant, um, loved every minute of it. I feel like I'm learning every day in the gym, even if I'm not doing anything, I'm sitting there watching the lads far. Um, I'm always picking up things, always trying new things, and I think that's what, that's what it's about, learning. Like, we haven't had an opponent for this fight up until this week, and um, he's brought someone in different every week sparring. We've worked on different things in the, in the, in the gym, pad work, bad work. We're, we're working hard on I think you'll see that on Saturday night. What do you think? What do you think Joe's helped you add as a fighter? What do you think? What do you think you're doing better now than what you were doing, say, two years ago? 
I'm a more rounder fighter. Um, I watch I watch my old fights and I watch them, my last two fights. Um, I'm not pulling out with, with my hands coming down. Um, I'm riding shots better. Um, I'm not sitting on the ropes as much. Um, I know it looked good where I was catching shots and, and firing back, but that's just giving the judges something to look at to get them around. Um, but I think everything's a lot more rounded. So we're a lot more patient. We find the gaps and uh, we'll take them on we see them. Well, before we concentrate on this fight, and I'll, I'll, ask, uh, I'll ask Francis just to talk a bit about this fight specifically, but just while we're talking about, uh, about Paul, Joe, you're training him. How close do you think he is to being ready for a world title shot? Could he go now? Yeah, um, Paul, I'll, uh, I'll give you some money later, flat mate. Thanks, pal. Um, no, listen, Paul, uh, he, he's uh, ready to go, I feel. When he first came, if he would offer me a world title shot, I know Paul was keen to get back in there, I would have said no. I feel having these two fights, this one now, has allowed him to develop, fitting in the gym. Um, and learn and develop. There isn't too much. Paul Butler's a, a talented fighter. He's uh, got natural ability, punches well with either hand, and um, he's just working and working. And I feel the longer he doesn't fight for the world title, the, the better it is, if that makes sense. So, I mean, it's allowed him to develop strong, grow into a, a decent sized bantam weight after moving up. And uh, yeah, summertime now, Sanit, Haskins, Jamie McDonald, any of them three. Who would you prefer? Jamie McDonald, he's the name, he's the big scout. Right, let's concentrate now on the, uh, so far as this French conference is concerned, the main event, which is uh, between the guys on either side here. We've got uh, Liam Smith, who is uh, marginally, I think marginally the favourite with the bookmakers, but there's very little in it. Liam Williams, undefeated. The one defeat which he's uh, had against Canelo in his last fight. And the winner of this, in theory, this is now for the WBO interim super welterweight world title. Because Canelo, as we all know, on May the 6th is going to be fighting Chavez Jr. Uh, and in theory, I guess the, 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 the fight for the winner of this would be Canelo. But there are options, aren't there, Francis? Well, um, yeah, as, as John said, this is for the interim. WBO um, world title. Um, should Canelo you know, choose to vacate the title, um, obviously he's the full champion, then the winner on Saturday will become full champion um, and will then have a mand mandatory fight against the top challenger um, in the rankings, which at present is Cotto. So there is a huge carrot at the end of the stick, uh, not only for the world title, but for the, you know, for the next fight. Yeah, I think both guys are pretty, pretty focused on the time, you know, until Saturday and uh, around about midnight when we'll find out this is uh, a, you know, who's going to be the winner. It's a really special fight, this one, isn't it, Francis? I mean, ever since it was made, you know, as the guy who's going to be standing there, sitting there, commentating on it, I mean, I've been so excited about this fight because there's not too many fights when you come into it and you, you're not, you've not got a pretty good idea as to what's going to happen. And I can stand here, and I'm not just saying it because I'm at a press conference, but I honestly don't know how this fight's going to pan out. And that's why it's such a good fight, because everybody has different opinions. Yeah, I mean, you speak to a, a lot of different people about, you know, and ask their opinions about the outcome of the fight. And I haven't heard the same answer twice. Um, you know, whether it's going to be you know, KOs from one of the guys, points from one of the guys, how it's going to pan out. Um, but what I know for sure, we're all in store for a fantastic fight. And, um, you know, massive, massive respect for both guys for, for taking the, the challenge. We've already heard from uh, Joe, he'll get another chance to talk about, about Liam in a, a moment or two, but Gary Lockett has uh, worked with Liam right the way through his career and to the point where he's now facing the biggest fight of his career by a long way. Just tell us what makes him special, Gary. What's special about him as a fighter and as a lad to work with? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming. Um, Liam Williams is able to adapt to anything that you put in front of him. Um, he wasn't given the red card treatment from the start of his career. Uh, he was in quite a few uh, small hall fights where he had to sell lots of tickets, blah, 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 and little money, you know. Um, I think uh, Queensbury signed him uh, for his second or third fight, but then with the introduction of Box Nation and, and shows being scarce and whatnot, we, we had to keep him on the, the small hall circuit and um, 
he had a chance to um, on Enzo Macronelli, Jürgen Bremer under card in Germany. And um, he took the chance with both with, with both hands and he shone out there. And then we were offered the fight with, with Ronnie Efron, um, which you know was again Ronnie was vastly experienced but took the fight and again Liam he impressed. And uh, it's just rolled rolled on from there. He's British champion, uh, WBO European champion, but he won the Commonwealth title as well. Um, he's you know, very dedicated, uh, good boxer, good puncher, and um, good respectful lad as well. Um, pleasure to have him in the gym. Um, and uh, you know, obviously it's going to be a really good fight, but um, I, I said we wouldn't be in the fight if we didn't think we were going to win. So. Uh, really looking forward to Saturday night. Got a lot of respect for Liam Smith and Joe Gallagher. You know, Joe, Joe Gallagher's a quality trainer. Um, Liam Smith's a quality fighter. Um, all four Smith brothers are. And uh, as I say, you know, we've got the utmost respect and we realise what a tough job it is, but we think we've done the work and um, made the best man win on the night. You've been over in America doing um, preparing over there. You've had a training camp. How's, how did that go? Do you want me to answer? Yeah. I think it went really well, and um, I answered the question earlier, and I think it was um, uh, Liverpool Radio. Um, it was just a case of changing things up for Liam because he gets very bored. Um, I was talking to the range BMW about a year ago, and I, I said, God, it's a great car. Five days later, he hates it. And then he gets, gets a bulldog. And four days later, he's fed up with him, he wants to get him away. He's you know, one of those guys, and uh, He's never satisfied, so training in the same gym for six, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks is no good for him. And um, you know, I've got family commitments, I've got two children and a family, and trying to keep the bailiffs away from the door, trying to earn the money. And uh, it's hard for me to go away, but um, I finally bit the bullet and went away. We got a couple of contacts there in, in Las Vegas and went over, and it was really good. You know, I had some really good sparring, um, some different runs, you know, good, good sort of altitude runs in Red Rock. Um, not too high, but you know a lot higher than what we used to. Good cervix, good training, um, good sparring. Met some good coaches as well, and um, yeah, really beneficial. Um, and just obviously, when we came back, just carried on the work where where we left off in, in, in Vegas. So nothing, nothing too much out in the ordinary. You know, two weeks away, but it was very beneficial. I and mean, it broke things up for him. What about you, Joe? How's uh, how's this lad been in the run up to him? Speaking to him uh, earlier on, I know he said that. Uh, Things have been rather better in preparation for this than it was back in September in the preparations for Canelo. Yeah, uh, preparations for his last fight were brilliant as well for Barcelona, John. So, uh, <laughs> I beg your pardon. No, let's say Liam has uh, we didn't have the best of camps for Canelo Alvarez. It's well documented. Um, I think, what was it, 12, 18 rounds of sparring uh, with the cut, the injury, but the type of person Liam was, he wasn't going to be denied that opportunity. He wanted to go in there, he wanted to test himself against the best in the world. That shows the type of character he is. A lot of people will have pulled out and wanted to be at the best, but that's the, that's the fighting man within Liam Smith. Uh, we've had a great training camp, we've done over 130 rounds sparring for this, and um, all everything that could go wrong is put right for this fight now. Um, and Liam Smith, um, he can't wait to get in the ring there Saturday night. He's up against a, a young, hungry, uh, competitive fighter on the way up with a, a young, hungry coach as well uh, to pose a, a serious threat. Um, Gary Lockett is a, is a former good amateur, good pro, half decent analyst of Box Nation. Um, so, uh, you know, he's all right. I've got huge respect for him. Um, and like I said, it's hard in this coaching when you have a young family, you're trying to appease everyone all the time. But we've done our homework and I'm looking forward to Liam Smith um, to go in there Saturday night to remind everybody. And what I'm really pleased about this, it is on DT and everyone's got to get a chance to see what I see all the time in the gym. Liam Smith is without doubt one of the best fighters Bruin has, but because he hasn't had the platform to showcase his skills, he'll have everyone talking Sunday morning how good he is. And that's one thing I'm really looking forward to. And um, I'm looking forward to a good night. I hope everyone has a, a good night at the arena and enjoy themselves. So how are you feeling, Liam? How, how, how are you in the run-up to this compared with the last big one against Canelo? How are you, how, how are you different? I'm feeling very good. I felt very good last time, obviously, but, you know, there's a massive difference between 12, 16 rounds of to, you know, over 100 and 
you, you will see the difference. There will be no complaint about my time and I'm Saturday. And that was, that was my only downfall in, in the last camp. You know, I was fit, I was in good shape and I was in good spirit. But it's on the ring, you know, every fighter will tell you when your time runs off, it's a nightmare. You see shots, they go right away. There'll be no, there'll be no worries about that Saturday. I've, you know, I've got all my time and I'm in very good shape. And like I said to you, believe me, I'm up for this fight. Do you think he's in your class? As yeah, a fighter? Yeah, yeah, you know, there's, there's different ways to look at it. Yeah, I do, I believe he's a good fighter, but there's just certain, certain things you can look at and put your finger on. Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a very good fighter, he does things well, he probably does things better than me that I don't do, and I do things better than him. There's, there's, you know, there's ways to look at it. I think he, he's a good fighter, but a lot of things will play his part on Saturday. And then, then things will be in my favour. Liam, it's the it's the big opportunity. It's almost here now. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm very confident. I'm in great shape. Um, yeah, I'm, I've done everything right this this camp. Um, and yeah, I'm actually confident. I'd say so. Uh, it's it's going to be a great fight, which I'm really looking forward to. And it's one which can really, you know, shoot me up to that next level now and get some big fights. He's uh, he's speaking respectfully there. I thought he was going to try and wind you up at this press conference. Yeah, but as he said, it's, well, as we both said, the fight speaks for itself. Um, it's going to be a very good fight, which I'm pretty sure everyone will enjoy. Um, there's, there's no need to talk, talk crap, you know, just we both done our work, we both done our own work, and it's going to be very, uh, it's going to be a very pleasing fight for the, for the fans and the crowd, you know. And when you hear Francis talk about the possibility of Canelo thereafter, and if it's not him, if he does vacate, going looking for other other big prizes, then the very real possibility of Miguel Cotto. I mean, these are these are massive fights, aren't they? Yeah, of course they are. But um, to be honest, I'm not looking past this one. It's, as Guy said, we both we both know how tough this challenge is in front of us, and uh, you know we we realise how good Leon Smith is, and. You know, we've got a real challenge on our hands, but again, it's one of them very confident in winning. And, you know, I just got to put all the hard work into practice Saturday night and come out the other end before I, you know, before I even think about them other fights. How have you learned from <coughs> going in against, against Alvarez? What sort of an effect has that had on you as a, as a man, as, as on a fighter? The only time you've been beaten to play? Yeah, that, that, that doesn't affect that. It should have, you know, I was gutted, I lost, no matter what, I lost to a good fighter, but I lost, I don't like losing, so I'll do everything I can not to lose again. So, you know, I, I took it, that, that, that was that sense to it, but, you know, I'll have learned off little things that you, you won't notice, only, you know, Joe will have noticed, sparring partners will have noticed, and, you know, Liam Williams is going to notice on Saturday what I've learned. I took everything in from the fight week, you know, the fight week was massive over there, the fight in general. Everything about it was, was huge. So, you know, that's all just added to my arsenal. And like I said, you're going to see Saturday. You know, Gary's trying to say, I'm finished after the, the Canelo fight. But I know he's just trying to make me doubt myself. You know, he's 30 or 24 public, and there's a difference of 28. You haven't seen the best of me yet, but with a bit of luck, he might do Saturday. Well, that's an answer for himself, Gary. What do you reckon? Is he, can he be the same man? As before, losing to Alvarez. My words got twisted. What I said was, knowing Liam Smith, it wouldn't have affected him, and he's going to come back stronger. And then next thing I know was the headline saying, "Lock it, that he, he got badly beaten." No, I never said that. that. That was complete bullshit. So that would be disrespectful to me. And if you know and look at my track record, I've never said anything like that about any fighter, Liam. I promise you that. What I said is, it, knowing Liam, I said, "Look, these fights can affect everybody, right?" And I know that he had, he had a bad camp and, and whatnot. What I said is, knowing that he is the, the fighter that he is, and you know, look, look what he did on the night. He, you know, he, he had it against him right from the start, and he stuck in there. He didn't show any weakness, he didn't show anything at all. Even when he got dropped, he was straight up, and he was, I think he, he was attacking straight at him. So, you know, sometimes these things get twisted, and I was fuming with that. But I think it was done, I think it was done, it was done to sell the fight, I don't know who did it, but I was fuming with that, and that shows a level of disrespect that you don't ever see from me. Um, you see, when, when my fighters stop kids and 
people are jumping around and saying, like, get in the ring and I tell them to stop it. You know, I never, I never do that. So, you know, I, want, I wanted Liam to know that because I was bullshit, you know, and um, I, did, I didn't say that. Um, that's all I want to say. Accepted? Yeah. Right, okay. Well, we, I think it's uh, pretty self evident we've got a, a tremendous fight on our hands. I want to be saying and wanting to ask the two guys and indeed the fellas in front of us. We've got a tremendous bill. Uh, on Saturday night, so uh, I'll open it to you now. Any questions for the guys up here, please? Uh, just to start, just checking on Strecker. Uh, it's an absolute pick and fight right down. How surprised are you in? Um, no, it is what it is. It's better for me again. Like I said, it's better for everyone. Everyone in my mate to put money on it. It's better for. I say, you know, they, they, they seem to think it bothers me when people pick Liam to win. It doesn't in the slightest. It's better for me. I said from from day one, you know, the same thing with my brother Callum and Rocky Field. The more people are picking Liam Williams to beat me, the better it is when I beat him. The more people I think, surprise day, no, he's done that to me. The more people who pick Liam to win, the better for me. So, again, the same with the, the bookies. The closer they are, the more money that get, gets. But, but either way, the better it is for us. If you are going to have a bet, make sure it's on 32red.com. <laughs> <laughs> Our new sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you, what do you reckon, Liam? I know you're, you're not a gambler, are you? But, uh, you know, so far as the, I'm sure a lot of the lads who are following you will be uh, fancying having a little bet on you. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> everybody thinks it's going to be close by. I think it's going to be close by the point I win. Um, you know, to all our bet and stuff, and then our marriage is just it's a lot of crap. You know, at the end of the day, there's two men having a fight. There's a lot of different outcomes, which you know, which could happen. Um, yeah, the bet and tell you and stuff is, is all a lot of crap to me. It's, it's a fight, and we both in it to win, and we both very, you know, very high.